Hi, Stu from Music Technology here. In this video, we're going to create a new prototyping pedal. We're going to create a pedal for quick prototyping, much like this one that I've already made and you might have seen in some of my previous videos. We're going to improve this design and we're going to build it into a box that didn't quite make it into a full project. So we're going to be recycling one of these boxes. We're going to look at the switch wiring as well, how to ground the input and how you wire up pedal circuits in these boxes. So let's get started. Here's my pedal project box, which didn't quite make it to a full pedal because if you look very closely, you'll see that I wired the jacks far too close to the switch, which means the switch has to be twisted like this. No good for a pedal that's going to be on a pedal board where this might twist, but perfectly fine for the lab, providing we can still plug in the jacks and they miss the switch. So let's try that a second. Yeah, it's pretty close on that side but it looks fine here. It's going to be all right for a prototyping pedal. We've already got some holes here we could put LEDs into. Um, and then what we're going to do is we are going to take these uh, breadboards here, join them together, and I'm going to stick them on top here like this to give us twice as much real estate as the other prototyping pedal. And we're going to drill a small hole in the back here to bring the wires out of and basically turn this into a bigger version of this. Um, and what's quite nice here is the jack for this one's here and the jack for this one's here. So that means that they'll go together nicely if I'm prototyping multiple effects through these pedals in the lab. So first of all, let me drill that hole in the back and then we'll look inside at the wiring. So let's think about how we're going to wire this pedal. And as we know, switches are set up such that we've got these three poles and it's dual throw. So it's either this way or this way. And one of these ways is on and one of them is bypass. Okay, so what we're going to do here is actually draw it on the pedal. So traditionally, we would come in our input, which is down here. And we would go into the middle. And then from the middle, we would take our output connected to our jack. And then, of course, we would connect across here. So in bypass, our signal comes into the input, goes through there, up there, and out of the output jack. Let me just label up the output jack there. Um, and then, obviously, we would have our PCB in there and out. And we would go to the PCB and from the PCB. And then over here, we would connect this to ground and we would connect our LED. And this would be connected to 9 volts, like so. We're not going to do that here. We're going to do a slightly different thing. We're going to take our input and we're actually going to come in up here instead. And then we're going to take this pole here to the PCB. And we're going to come out of the PCB and we're going to come back in on this pole here. And then we're going to take our output jack from the same place. So our output. Now you'll see when the poles are joined up in this direction, the circuit is activated and our signal comes in the jack here, goes to the PCB, out of the PCB and back out of the output jack like that. I like to think about the signal flow, hence drawing that in. Because now what happens in bypass, well, when we're in this direction, actually nothing happens because we come in and the input can't go anywhere because the, its pole's not joined to anything now. So what we need to do is just run a short piece of wire to join these two poles together. 
Now, if you notice, we come in the input jack and we go through this wire and out of the output jack. So that's bypass mode in this direction. However, you might also notice there's now a spare pole there. So what we can do is ground that PCB input, and that allows any capacitors that are on the input and don't have a bleed resistor, for example, to bleed to ground. So when we reactivate the pedal, it perhaps doesn't pop. There's other things you can do to reduce popping as well, but that's just one of them. Now, arguably, you might not really need to do this in a prototyping pedal. You might not want to, but I'm just doing it here to show you that this is usually my standard way of wiring the pedals. And the reason I'm taking that out is because I'm just going to show you how the ground is wired in this. And I'm going to use white because it's quite dark, the image there. Here, you'll see down here, there's a ground tab. So I would come underneath that wire line to there. And then I'm going to wire it to there. There's a reason for that. And then underneath here, and obviously wire it to there. Let me just draw that again a little bit better. So you see how all my grounds are connected and then this would go off up here to power ground. Then for my LED, I would do exactly what we did last time. I would have my LED. It doesn't really matter which side you put the current limiting resistor in your LED circuit as long as it's in there. Um, this is the LED. This is the uh, R LED, we'll call it. This is plus nine volts here. And then we'll take that to there. Now, hopefully you can see now that when the circuit's activated, when we're coming into the input, going to the PCB, coming out of the output, this is also connected together now. So it's grounded that end of our LED and it lights up, but this isn't used. We're not using this connection. Now there are other ways of wiring that to achieve the exact same thing. Let me just take my signal paths off um, and just leave it like that. That's exactly how I'm gonna wire the pedal in a minute. Yeah, there are other ways of doing it with slightly different wiring, but it does involve joining some of the poles of the switch together and I find anyway that it's quite effective grounding the input of the circuit in bypass. So I tend to favor this type of wiring over the old style of wiring when you're just doing a hard bypass. Anyway, let's actually do it in the pedal. So I'm gonna follow my plans for wiring this and I'll do it as a time lapse. But before I do that, um, obviously I want an on off LED and I've already got these two holes drilled from whatever the project was before. So I thought um, I'll probably put a green LED in here. Dropped it already. Already put a green LED in one side, um, like that, which will be switch on and off. And because the other side will look weird without it filled in, I will put in this red LED in there, just to tell me that it's connected to the power when the power's connected on the back there. So, um, and they'll obviously have resistors as well, current limiting resistors on them. So what I'm gonna do is just wire it together now. So there we have it. I've wired the switch exactly like in the diagram that we looked at earlier. Um, there's still enough room for the jacks to plug in here, even with the switch at a weird angle. Of course, you don't see it from the outside. It just looks like a normal pedal. Um, I think I made the wiring of these LEDs to the positive lead slightly tougher than it needed to be, but I've just used some heat shrink there to keep things out of the way. We've got all our grounds connected together, so 
background goes to here, that goes to there, that goes to there. And then um, that's also connected to the power supply ground, which is connected to the ground thing here. So they're always all connected together. The only thing that isn't always connected to it is the ground side of that LED, which is connected to the switch, tell you if the circuit is active or not active. And then this LED tells you if the power's plugged in or not. The only reason I put that LED in there was just because the hole was there from the previous project. You don't need this LED at all, but I just thought I'd use the hole seeing as it was there, which is why this wiring got a little bit kind of out of hand down here with this heat shrink. But um, you learn each time you do these things. So um, now let's plug it in and uh, see if it works with the noise here. Okay, so first of all, we want to know whether this comes on when I insert the power, and it does, that's good. And does the switch work? Yes. Now we probably don't want to join our in and out for this first test because we want to test whether bypass works or not. So I'm going to set my noise box here to take it into the input and I'll take my output to my lab amplifier, which is over there, turn that on. And hopefully a bypass. We get some noise, and if I unbypass it, we just get a hum because these aren't connected together, of course. Um, but if I do connect them together, I imagine there's a circuit here. That would so that would complete the circuit, and we'd be able to hear it. And of course, in bypass the. Uh, well, I've connected them together so they're both grounded at the moment, but the input is grounded in bypass. Um, as you heard, then you do get interference from these long wires. I might end up making them a bit, bit shorter or because they're exposed on the breadboard on top here, your circuits tend to pick up a bit more interference than when they're shielded in the actual box, but that's just the nature of prototyping these things. Anyway, that's all working and it gives me a second prototyping pedal like this one which is good that means I can leave projects on there and build new projects on here and kind of rotate them build more complex things on here and smaller circuits on there anyway I'm Steve from Music Technology I'll catch you again next time